From Tops comes the all-new digital card collecting app, free to download from iTunes or Google Play, Star Wars Card Trader. For the first time ever, collect and trade everything from legendary 1977 Star Wars cards to new cards featuring exclusive content from Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens. All from the comfort of your mobile devices, Star Wars Card Trader. These are the cards you're looking for. Listening to Coffee with Kenobi, you are with Dan Z and Corey Club. The podcast you're looking for. This is. <laughs> yes. For an entire generation, people have experienced Star Wars the only way it's been possible on the TV screen. But if you've only seen it this way, you haven't seen it at all. This is the podcast you're looking for. We've been waiting for you. The force is strong here, even stronger than the coffee. At last, where have you been? Welcome to Coffee with Kenobi. Here are your hosts, Dan Z and Corey Club. And welcome to Star Wars Reads Day with Coffee with Kenobi. Yeah, you can clap. We are a Star Wars podcast that analyzes our favorite saga in a whole new way and are delighted to be here for Star Wars Reads Day 2015. I'm Dan Z, Mr. Zare for my students here, and with me is my good friend and co-host, Corey Club. Hello, everybody. How's it going? Good, fun day today uh, at school here. We're having all kinds of expos here, a lot of games, a lot of prizes, uh, great hosting by all the students here helping out, and uh, it's a good time. It is, it is. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of things that go, of course, into organizing something like this. And it really can't go on without the vision of Mr. Gross. He's our librarian here. Right now he's networking as we speak, yep. even though he knows he's supposed to be on the stage. So let's have uh, Mr. Gross come on down to Coffee with Kenobi and tell us a little bit more about Star Wars Reads Day. All right. Hey, thanks so much for all the people here to attend to Star Wars Reads Day. And thanks to Coffee with Kenobi and all the other guests we've had today. This has been such a great event. Yeah, you've done an amazing job of making this happen. Tell us... Uh, kind of how you got the idea for this and uh, what we've got going on, all the clubs and sponsors that we have. Well, the idea came from just, you know, I'm a librarian here at the high school and uh, love reading and love promoting reading and and I love Star Wars, so it was just a perfect marriage of Star Wars and promoting literacy. Uh, you know, it's such a great story, so many great characters, that it's, it's a great way to introduce or fall in love with reading. And so I wanted to bring Star Wars Reads Day to Washington, uh, the high school, but also to the community to promote uh, reading, promote something fun, some excitement on an October day. And, uh, and it's, it's worked out really well. Um, the book club is, is uh, involved with this. Um, Part of our uh, mission and book club is to raise books uh, with our Scholastic Fair here. We're raising books that we're going to then turn around and give right back into the community to uh, the grade schools and uh, get these books into the schools, get these books into the hands of kids that maybe don't have uh, books at home and, uh, and just give that opportunity to, um, to, so that they can ha- start creating and building their own library, some books that they love, and, uh, and that route. And, you know, I asked the book club to help out, but I've got members of the uh, Washington Game Club here. I've got wa- members of uh, the Drama Club here, and didn't they do an awesome job? Yes, yeah, did. very good. They did an awesome job uh, with uh, performing a scene from Ian Desher's Verily A New Hope, which was just (laughs) fantastic to see. They had costumes and everything. And then I also have some science club members here and some faculty and staff. It's just, it's been a great, great event so far. Absolutely. So, you know, talk about Star Wars books and Star Wars Reads Day. This is an annual event. Uh, Something like this magnitude, you have to have a lot of help. And, um, you know, you have have some great members here from the 501st. How did you get in touch with some of folks like that? Um, well, I went to their webpage and uh, I put out, I put the call out and said, "Hey, we're doing this awesome event at the high school, and uh, would love to have you here to just draw some attention, but also to have some excitement here. I mean, how awesome is it to kind of walk around and mingle with?" some of the characters from Star Wars. I mean, I just think that's so cool and all their awesome costumes. And I saw some lightsabers flashing over in the corner over there. And so, you know, that, so I just reached out on the internet and, uh, and they responded. Well, I know that uh, 501st and Rebel Legions all do a great job of having, helping their own community and 
uh, stepping out. So yeah. it's good for them. Oh, yeah, it's, it's great, great, great. We're, uh, we want to thank Tom again for all the amazing things he's done uh, for WCHS, not only uh, for Star Wars Freeze Day, but just uh, the contributions he's made to our faculty and staff. Let's hear it from Mr. Gross. Thank you. You bet. And now let's go into some news, including an interview with a member of the 501st and the Mandalorian Mercs. And now, let's see what's brewing in the Star Wars universe this week. Oh, wait. This is interesting. You found something. I'm about to let everyone in on the secret. All right, so one of the great things about um, Star Wars and Phantom is the 501st, the Mandalorian Mercs, the Rebel Legion, they are charity organizations, costuming organizations that do their part to spread awareness uh, for important, important things that are going on. Uh, the donations they receive, they give uh, to children's hospitals and to other very needy, worthy causes. Uh, they're just, um, they were embraced by Lucasfilm uh, in the late 90s, and they've just done nothing but grow. They are a worldwide community. Let's have a member of the Midwest Garrison 501st. Come on down right now and join us. Woo! Welcome, my friend. He is, he is taking off He's his bucket right him. now. He is an ad ad driver, an amazing, amazing costume, to be sure. So tell us, if you will, uh, your name and sort of how you got involved with the 501st and what it's all about. Okay. Well, uh, thanks, everyone, for coming out first. Uh, my name is Scott Miller, and um, I've been a Star Wars fan about as long as I can remember. Um, I, You know, honestly, one of my biggest connections with Star Wars was always reading the great expanded universe novels uh, throughout my childhood, and um, that just really kept me engaged through the long drought of uh, films and things like that. I got into the costuming side of it through one of my friends from high school. Um, we went to Star Wars Celebration 4? In five Los, Ange in Los Angeles? See. No, it must have been 5 and 6 in Orlando. Yes. And uh, he built a Jedi costume. Um, so he got into the Rebel Legion, and that really got me thinking. And I built my first costume uh, not too long after that, which was an X-Wing pilot, um, a, a custom X-Wing pilot, uh, not, not one of the face characters specifically. And, you know, not too long after that, that really jogged my interest in getting an Imperial costume, too. And then that was, you know, that started the long journey of trying to figure out what the best one would be you know, what, what, uh, what really sounded like fun. And from there I hopped between a few before I settled on the, uh, AT, AT driver. It just, uh, a really cool, uh, costume that you just don't see that often. And, uh, that just really drew me to it. I think. Well, definitely sitting here, you're authentic enough. I mean, I can mistake you for a guy going around off the screen. So looks great. Uh, you know, some of the folks out there don't know, and some of the, uh, the kids here don't know about the costuming and, and, and what you guys do. So uh, what does it take to put this stuff together? Uh, you said you've done numerous costumes. Uh, so something like this, uh, this costume you hear, uh, what would you say what goes into something like that? Well, you know, the best thing if you're, if you're looking to get involved is we have just so many resources available on our two websites, uh, the rebellegion.com forums. And uh, with the 501st, it's a little bit more scattered. But in general, you'll have forums for, we have detachments for, eat, for the different groups of costumes. So, for instance, this is a armored cavalry detachment so we've got an armored cavalry detachment website with forums just lots of members that are looking to help new prospective members and all of the information you could possibly want to find out if you were looking to build your own costume you know a lot of it is just you got to just get out there and and just just talk to people you know there's so many people that are out there looking to help prospective members and you know there's lot there's even more resources now than there were just two or three years ago, you know, lots of more, lots more sources where you can get stuff, you know, if you're not necessarily capable of building everything yourself and it, and just a, a ton of, of people you can leverage for information. Absolutely. And have you seen an increased, um, push for people to join ever since, uh, Disney bought Lucasfilm and the force awakens is getting closer and closer. Oh, it does. It does feel like there's just more people all the time. And, I mean, it just feels like more events than ever before. You know, it feels like we're getting event requests, even in central Illinois, just every, day, you know, every weekend now. I mean, I was, I remember just a couple years ago, you know, one or two a month maybe. I mean, that was about the best you could hope for in this area. Obviously, in Chicago, it's a little bit different, but I'm from the central Illinois area also. And so it's great to see with the raised awareness of the new films, like we're just 
everyone's so excited about Star Wars, which is great because it lets us share our love about Star, about Star Wars and help raise money for good causes, obviously. I want to know, too, uh, your personal experience uh, as far as uh, putting on the costume and, like you said, going to the, all these events. What's that like for you? How does that make you feel? <laughs> it's, you know, it's just hard to describe. I mean, it's, I, I have to say, you know, earlier today I saw there was, there's been a little, actually he's right over there, this little boy in blue, and he, he was just talking to, uh, to Tarful, our, our resident Wookiee over here. Yeah, he's, he's like eight And I away. just, I, I had the biggest smile on my face behind my helmet. It's just great to see the kids come out and have fun. I mean, that's just, it just puts a smile, it just puts a smile on your face. It just warms your heart to see. And, you know, I, I love to get out to these events where we see all the kids. It's great. I right, well, thank you, Scott, so much for all you do for the 501st and just the uh, Midwest Garrison. And just, again, a worldwide organization that gives back to the communities and, and helps out really good causes and all done with joy and love for Star Wars. Thank you so much, Scott, for being a guest on Coffee with Kenobi. Thank you guys for having me. All right, so we're going to jump now, and uh, it's a little more uh, discussion. One of the things we like to do on Coffee with Kenobi, as we talk a little bit about the news, collectors, our, our main thrust of our show is getting fans involved with our show, which at the end of the show, you will have time to ask any questions you have or to sort of share your thoughts on Star Wars. But before we do that, Corey, let's talk a little bit about what's been going on. Uh, in New York this weekend is New York Comic Con. It's turning out to be one of the biggest conventions, really. Well, it's almost on par with San Diego Comic Con. I know in the past years, San Diego Comic Con has been pretty large as far as uh, actors and, and, and you know more uh, of the production companies coming in and producing, uh, you know, having them do panels and things like this. So uh, New York is obviously coming to par with that as far as making uh, making uh, that more of a relevant event as far as for um, you know for fans to take out, take check out on the East Coast. Absolutely, and we have our Mike Audetti He's covering New York Comic Con for us, so we'll have him on very soon. Uh, but the, maybe the biggest news that's come out, there have been a lot of collectibles and things announced and things of that nature, uh, but we did find out when the Los Angeles premiere of The Force Awakens, and when is that, Corey Club? Uh, it's December 14th. Um, we heard that earlier in the week. I think you uh, texted me a little bit yeah. about that, and we were pretty excited. But um, that's a little ahead of, ahead of time as far as the 17th. Um, I think it's, it's 18th. It's, well, it's 17th in, in Europe. Is that right? Oh yeah, look at so, you. Yeah, he's a man. He's a man of the world, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I try to get there, but um, yeah, I think. Uh, what do you think? You're going to try to take a plane out there and check that out? Oh man. Well, uh, if the Hollywood Reporter is actually uh, one of the main groups that broke this, but it does say the the premiere, of course, is going to be a premiere in London as well, which yep. makes sense since that's where they filmed it. Um, uh, Hollywood Reporter speculates it's going to be. Um, some of the biggest fans that are out there are going to be trying press. We're going to try sure. to get an invite. I don't know that that's going to happen. In fact, Disney has pretty much said they're not going to do any screenings. Oh, this, I, I think they feel pretty confident in their product, which makes sense to me. Yeah, it makes sense to me, too. I mean, everybody's been looking forward to this for a number of years now, actually, and uh, it's coming to fruition very soon. We're almost, you know, two months out, uh, less than that, if, if anything, but... Um, you know, kids are gearing up for Halloween, and we sell a lot of Halloween costumes and stuff like that. And merchandising has been huge, uh, kind of kicking everything off, too. I think they're trying to play cl- close to the vest there as far as, the, you know, showing any premiere or anything beforehand. True. The thing we know for sure is that it's going to premiere on December 17th in the U.K., December 16th in France, and then, of course, worldwide debut on December 18th. I know we'll be there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we're going to definitely do a midnight pass, hopefully, uh, get in there and be able to get, meet with some folks and uh, talk to fans and have a great time. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, our next uh, thing we're going to look at is we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, Rebels Season 2. Yeah, that's, that's interesting because um, they had a couple trailers come out recently of folks been uh, watching on the uh, Disney uh, XD. Uh, we have Season 2 coming out pretty, pretty soon in next week or so. Uh, they had the premiere over the summer as far as what we saw in Anaheim. With Darth Early Vader. Th- yeah, with Darth Vader and, and everybody meeting him, kind of taking him on. But, uh, you know, fans are looking forward to the season two. Uh, we saw a preview just the other day uh, about as far as um, kind of what we'll kind of aim to see some new characters, some old characters returning, Dan. Uh, name us some of those that we've seen. 
Yeah, well, of course, uh, the big one, the big announcement. We knew Ahsoka because she was at the yep. end of season one, but uh, Captain Rex from the Clone Wars, Captain Wolf, and uh, Captain Gregor. Oh, they're right. all commanders now. Yep. My apologies, gentlemen. Um, they are all going to be coming back, as is uh, Hondo Anaka, a very famous <laughs> pirate from uh, the Clone Wars, actually. Yeah, he looks like he gives An- um, uh, Ezra some, some knowledge or some, some advice maybe that he's seen over the years. He said, be a Jedi pirate. So I'm not going to do a Hondo impression. <laughs> no, I know no. you're tempted to. I can't do it. You can't? Okay. No. It's, it's going to be pretty exciting. Uh, it's on, of course, our website, coffeewithkenobi.com, as well as starwars.com. Uh, it looks spectacular. Rebels, if you haven't seen Rebels, it basically takes place, it's six years before the scenes in A New Hope, and it's a tremendous, tremendous show. Uh, the quality is good. The animation is great. The voice acting is incredible. Uh, a lot of talented folks there. And, of course, yep. Dave Filoni, who was in charge of Clone Wars, um, is running the show there for that. So it, it's been a lot of fun. Absolutely, and uh, I'd like to mention, too, some of the villains we saw in the trailer, uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar is doing voice one of those, uh, and that's kind of a surprise. We talked about our last show as far as, um, you know, her voicing that and some new characters and some new Inquisitors. So it's exciting to see new characters and old characters kind of meet up. That's right, that's right. It's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing what everyone else thinks about Star Wars Rebels. <laughs> Han Solo, Rebel Soldier, Lando Calrissian, and Bespin Guard each sold separately from Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back Collection, new from Kenner. Looking? Found someone you have, I would say, hmm? Your lightsabers will make a fine addition to my collection. So what? Uh, one of the fun things about Coffee with Kenobi is um, a lot of the uh, companies that's, that support Star Wars and are promoting it... Um, they're very gracious to send samples of things out to different media outlets, and we're very honored that we get to be one of them. And we got a really nice um, package from Hasbro, and essentially they have a marketing campaign where they did a hashtag, and you could either choose the light side or choose the dark side. We chose light side, Corey. Why do we do that? <laughs> Everyone keeps telling Why me I made the that? wrong choice. Um, no, that's not the wrong choice. I think it's a personal choice, if you want to call it that. We kind of talked about it a little bit. I know that... Uh, Everybody has their most, either side they like to choose. Uh, I'm definitely on the light side of things. I think you are too. That was a natural choice for us. But um, yeah, it was, it was kind of a fun campaign and uh, got a huge box in the mail. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. Hasbro was very kind to do that. We appreciate that and thank them very much. Uh, the, I think the main reason for me to sort of lean you towards the light side, because, you know, <laughs> that sounds worse than it actually is. Um, the dark side has, of course, the cool stuff, the stormtroopers and Kylo Ren and things of that nature. Yeah. However, I wanted to make sure that uh, if Luke Skywalker and Han Solo and Princess Leia were hard to get a hold of, that we'd make sure that we could, you know, be fortunate enough to, That's right. to get something like that. So let's go ahead and look at... Some of the things they sent us, we'll just sure. kind of unbox here. Uh, one of the things they were sending out to everybody was they had the, um, the uh, Black Series Titanium, and they're basically small die casts. Uh, I don't know how big you would say they are. Yeah, it uh, looks like it's, it's the size kind of a, uh, a, it's like a ornament or something. It's like the yeah, Hot Wheels uh, 4 and $5 sure. ones they're selling at, at Toys R Us and Target and things of that nature. The well, one they sent us was the Millennium Falcon. There are, there are a number of ones that you can choose from uh, that they send you. You could be the X-Wing, Vader's TIE Advance, First Order Special Forces TIE Fighter, which is really slick with yeah. the black and the red, Kylo Ren Shuttle, Ray Speeder, a whole bunch. But we uh, were fortunate to get the Millennium Falcon. What do you think of this thing? Uh, it's slick, man. Uh, definitely the one from Episode 7. He's got the, the rectangle r- radar dish on there, uh, updating it for the new episode. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of heavy in this box here. It's the kind of the Black Series. But I think out of all the ones that you kind of mentioned there, uh, it'd be one of the top ones to get. Yeah, I, when, I, when I saw this is the one that we were going to get, we were pretty excited about that. We have it here on display for people if they want to check it out. But that was the first one they sent us. Another thing they sent is the Black Series 6-inch is such an incredibly popular line. Yep. It's, it's probably eclipsed the 3 and 3 quarter inch line. And uh, they sent us Ray uh, from Jakku with BB-8. And you uh, actually have this open, don't you? Uh, or am I, I thinking of Tom? I, I've got, I picked up on, on Force Friday, I picked up um, Kylo Ren um, as kind of my first get, if you want to call it that, for the Black Series 6 inch. Because I don't have any of those yet, and I think we go well with some other uh, collectibles. Uh, but this is definitely one I, I want to kind of keep an eye out for. Holding back a little bit just to see what, what else is going to be coming right. out. So, but you had mentioned that you don't have any of these yet, so how do you feel about it? Yeah, I, I've been sort of hit and miss on the Black Series 6 inch line because. Uh, some of the sculpts, I think, are gorgeous, and some uh, sort of missed the mark for me personally. I do know, as I said, they have eclipsed the three and three-quarter inch line as far as 
the challenge of trying to find them and things of that nature. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are you a collector? Yes. All right, come on down. We've got a member here of the Mandalorian Mercs that's going to join us. How's it going, guys? Great. Well, go ahead and tell us your name and uh, tell us about your Star Wars collection. Well, uh, my name is James Kelly. Uh, I'm actually a resident from Springdale, Illinois, right outside East Peoria and Metamora. Um, I actually have every figure from the 6th series that's been put out to date. Wow. Um, I've been getting them as they've been coming out in waves. I actually ju- I missed out on the opportunity on Force Friday to get the five that came out initially. I actually had to bounce between multiple Walgreens just the other day in order to actually pick up all five of them. Because, like, literally, there are three different locations just in Peoria, and sure. the last one I had to pick up was actually, I believe it was in East Peoria. Yeah, I think you're right. And, and uh, what do you think about the sculpts uh, on these? To be honest, I like the sculpts. I like the attention to detail. A lot of them look really slick, especially uh, when we come to the new ones. Like, I like the way they made Ray and BB-8 look with the one you have here. I really like the Kylo Ren sculpt. The lightsaber is a little wonky to me, but... Does it seem like it's... I mean, you have Kylo, too. Does it yeah. seem like it could break easily, or is it okay? Uh, it kind of snaps on. I don't know if you've opened yours uh, yet. No, I kept all my... <laughs> I keep all mine in box. Okay. And, boy. Uh, they're all tacked up on my wall around various stuff. Nice. So, you know, I'm displaying them that way. Good, good. Dude. So, wait, do you have a personal favorite so far of the, of the Force Awakens? Oh, out of the Force Awakens one, honestly, the one that I'm looking forward to the most comes out in the next set, and that's Captain Phasma. Oh, yeah, that and me definitely, too. I, Corey so, has me on the lookout for that one. I know a couple of folks have heard online that they well, came out early. Um, yeah. They mixed up some shipments or things like that, or, or mixed, or done on purpose, I think, uh, just to get new stuff out there. But uh, that's what I'm keeping my eye out for, too. So Yeah, I know a few people who I go back and forth with on Facebook, and you know we show off some bits of our collection. One of the guys just picked up a Kylo Ren uh, vinyl pop, okay. uh, the Target exclusive one, I believe. Mm-hmm. And so somebody started, we started popping in like some of our other Force Awakens stuff. And it's like, okay, I see yours, and I, I show you all. I bam, all five. Next thing I know, someone pops up with a... Uh, Elite series Captain Phasma and a Black series Captain Phasma. It's just like okay, that that's just not that's not cool, man. <laughs> that's not cool. You just showed us all up. <laughs> Very good. Um, I guess I'll ask there uh, for our last question. Um, are we looking forward to for the you know re- remainder of this Black series? Um, I think they'll come out with um, characters that we haven't seen yet at all. I mean, a Luke or a Han or. Uh, to be honest, I'm really, really hoping that we get to see more variations of certain characters. Like, the last set kind of flew under the radar when the uh, Bausch version of Princess Leia came out. So I was kind of excited to see that. I'm kind of hoping to see uh, an, uh, the uh, other versions of her. I Ultimately, I want to see one of each character in their respective costume from each film. Yeah. But probably the one I'm looking forward to the most outside of Captain Phasma, at least variant-wise, would probably be uh, Emperor's Wrath Darth Vader, which there's no release date for that one that's been set that I could tell of. And it looks kind of neat because they kind of got this uh, X-ray kind of effect going on because it's actually when he was getting electrocuted when he threw the Emperor. That one, yeah. And that one's going to be a Walgreens exclusive. So wow. I'm really okay. looking forward to that I like one. the white-armored Fett. Yeah. And I like the Proto Boba. I actually bought two of those uh, so I could mod one. Oh, okay. Very good. Well, thank you so much for being a guest here on Coffee with Kenobi. Keep on doing the great work you are with the Mercs and the 501st. Thank you for having me. Thanks, man. Hey, it's Dan Z and Corey Club from Coffee with Kenobi. And we are excited to let you know about the Star Wars Card Trader app from Tops. Yeah, Dan, you remember those cards that came out in 1977, the good old days? Well, they're back oh, yes. again. Yeah, so it's the Star Wars Card Trader app. It has them all, as well as fantastic images from The Force Awakens, The Clone Wars, Rebels, and much more. Absolutely. You've got your favorite characters, memorable scenes. You've got key moments. It's all there. You get credits every day for free from the app, which is available for, from iTunes or Google Play. Open packs from the cantina, trade with your friends, and enjoy these amazing Star Wars memories as you take your first step into a larger world. There are so many different sets to choose from also, and there's so many great cards to chase. There's special inserts, there's rewards for completing sets and variants. It's everything you love in collecting from a galaxy far, far away. The Star Wars Digital Card Trader Collecting App from Tops. These are the cards you're looking for. 
All right, we've got some, some more good things. Oh, we have a raffle? We have a raffle. We do. I've got some. Uh, these, are, these are the prizes that the kids are putting tickets into from winning the game. So the first one that I have here is uh, for Hannah Langstaff. Is Hannah Langstaff? She is, here she comes. Yay, Hannah. Let's get up for Hannah. Nice. All right, the next prize that I have is, uh, by the way, a lot of these prizes were donated by uh, Zeke's Games and Comics. And so thank you to Zach at Zeke's uh, for, for some of these donations. The next prize I have is uh, Reagan. It just says Reagan. Is Reagan here? All right. Congratulations, Reagan. Enjoy it. All right, and I have, now these are the front door prizes, so get those tickets out there, the orange tickets you dropped in when you came in. So we're going to read off the numbers, and then we'll send these numbers over to the prize table. So, uh, so when I name your number, just be patient, head over there, and we'll get the numbers over. They'll check them and then uh, give you your prize. So here we go. We have 830-8011. 8011, all right, head over to the prize table. Then we have 830-8090, 8090. Then next, 830-8065, 8065. Oh, I think we got a winner on that one. Then we have 830-8051, 8051. Another one. Look at all these great prizes we have. We're going to get you over at the prize table. 830-8088-8088-830. Next one. 830-8042-8042. And 830-8050-8050. Don't throw those tickets away. We have a lot more prizes to give away. So if one of those numbers was yours, head over to the prize table, claim your prize. Thanks, guys. Dan, were you a winner on that one? Uh, I was not, were you? Uh, I, actually, one of my sons is here, Noah. He got a chance to go over there and grab one of those awesome prize packages, uh, door prizes. So thank you very much for putting that together. Oh, absolutely. That was, that was all Tom and Maureen and Caleb did that. All right, we've got a few more things we want to talk about collector-wise. Uh, absolutely, yeah. And uh, the next thing we want to talk about is um, the Nerf Chewbacca Bowcaster. This is, uh, yeah, based on Corey's son's expression. <laughs> yeah, he this stood is a pretty up and exciting had to sit back little down thing. Because... Tell us about this. This is actually one that uh, is going to the club household. That's right. Uh, we talked about this. Uh, this is something that uh, Nerf came out with uh, as the Bowcaster, a replica of Chewbacca's famous weapon. Um, it's got. Looks like it. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, yeah. I might have to arm wrestle you. <laughs> we have to have the Nerf war over it. Yeah, oh, good. So uh, I'll shoot Nerf, Nerf bolts at you. You can try and deflect them with a lightsaber. So, uh, yeah, this is definitely something that's, that's pretty cool. It shoots up to 65 feet. Uh, it's 20 meters if you're thinking about that. Uh, oh, look at you. <laughs> you are. I said <laughs> you were worldly. You clearly are. So it's got, it's got pretty authentic things. It's got the bright orange colors uh, that Chewbacca has. Uh, and then know, the, green, uh, the green, the green darts, yeah. darts uh, have the Rebel logo on them. Yeah, so it's full color. It's it looks great. I mean, it's something if you're looking to dress up as a Chewbacca for Halloween or just want to you know hang out and with your robe on and, and be able to you know feel like you want to challenge your brother or sister or, or even a friend of yours to come out for a Nerf war. This is definitely something to pick up. It is uh, another thing we got, which actually is not here with us right now, is the uh, Chewbacca. It's the Chewbacca electronic mask. And this yeah. thing, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is a, is a thing to behold. Please look it up online. Uh, my son has it at home. Uh, he's had a lot of fun with it. It's, it's an actual Chewbacca mask, but it's, got, it's wired. It's got batteries in it. And the more you open, the wider you open Chewbacca's mouth, the louder and more intense the growls. They came right from the movies. It is really something else. In fact, I'm going to call out Mrs. Zare, who, uh, who's busy right there. But Mrs. Zare even tried on the Chewbacca mask. And uh, it was pretty, pretty entertaining. Yeah, thumbs up over there. Yeah, <laughs> she still is beautiful though, even with the mask on. I got to say. <laughs> so, how loud does her Chewbacca get? How about it? It gets pretty loud. Like, does it? Okay. It, so you're tempted to do it, aren't so you? you? Can, no, I, I can't do it myself. Actually, I have to gargle some water to do that. But oh. Uh, anyway, uh, so what else do we have here? That's a, the last thing we want to talk about is the. Um, this is uh, one of the big ones. This is the, the Star Wars. It's the 
the Master Lightsaber and the Extendable Lightsaber uh, set. The Jedi Master Lightsaber, it has a hundred different combinations, uh, different handles, different color blades. Um, it is definitely a hot item that Hasbro is, is promoting. And you can buy different ones. They send us Luke Skywalker from Return of the Jedi, but you can get Luke. Uh, yep. You can get Darth Vader. Kylo and, Ren. And, yeah, and you can get Anakin's too. It's it's pretty darn impressive. It's uh, most impressive, you might say. It truly is. Uh, this is something we actually got for our son for... Our, my, our grandparents got for our son for for his birthday, and uh, he's been playing with it for quite a long time. So uh, it's been a lot of fun uh, to be able to put together, you know, every different combination. And we, we, have, we have a listener here who has a question for us. No. Come on up, buddy. What's your question? How exactly do you uh, get that? How exactly do you get that? Well, actually, this was donated to, uh, to one, of, uh, one of our staff members, but you can get them at Toys R Us and Target and Walmart. We're pretty, it's a pretty good thing to put on Santa's list, I would say, too, my friend. So definitely <laughs> make sure to check that out. So let's go on now uh, to our discussion statement. We've got an exclusive for WCHS. Uh, you saw the interactions um, with the WCHS Drama Club. They did an amazing job. And it's all thanks to the, to the genius of Ian Desher. Ian Desher wrote William Shakespeare's Star Wars. He wrote for all six of the films. He, he took the Star Wars films and wrote them in iambic pentameter and different poetic devices. And uh, I had the opportunity, yeah, he's actually become a friend of ours yeah. through, through Celebration Anaheim, but I had the opportunity to go to St. Louis a few weeks ago and interview him live. So we do have a video presentation of that and sort of talking just for WCHS and Star Wars Reads Day. So let's bring in Ian Desher in this awesome conversation. Luke, you're going to find that many of the truths we cling to depend greatly on our own point of view. I must be allowed to speak. You've taken your first step into a larger world. Welcome to Star Wars Reads Day. I'm here with William Shakespeare Star Wars author Ian Desher. Really, really excited. This is an exclusive just for Washington Reads, and we're really excited to have you in here. Welcome. Thanks. You called Cliff Kenobi in Washington Reads. Thanks. Hi, everybody. Again. <laughs> so let's just get down to it. Ian. What inspired you to write William Shakespeare Star Wars? So uh, three things happened right around the same time. So I watched the Star Wars trilogy with some good friends of mine. Then I read Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, one of these first mashup books. And then went to the Oregon Shakespeare Festival with my family. Uh, and so I had Star Wars and mashups and Shakespeare all in my head. And uh, after the, I was at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival and I had the idea. Uh, and uh, just, I uh, get all, it all went from there. Wow. And it just, it just, was there some particular moment, or just sort, you just sort of thought, wow, this would be cool for Star Wars? You know, my memory is that I was on a morning jog, which is when I seem to have all my good ideas, uh, and uh, was, was just thinking, it would be really fun to take Star Wars and rewrite it as though it were played by Shakespeare. Um, and it seemed like it might work for, you know, theme-wise, it seemed like it would work. Length-wise, it seemed like it would work. Uh, so it just just felt right uh, as soon as I had the idea. Right, that's cool. And then of course, uh, your latest book is Tragedy of the Sith: Revenge, which we'll be giving uh, away a copy of that here at the event. Um, what challenges did the prequels represent for you versus the original trilogy? Well, I don't uh, know the prequels nearly as well as I know the original trilogy, and so I had to make sure that I understood what was going on in them. So I pulled together a very exclusive group of people, of which Mr. Zare was one, uh, to talk me through, uh, not only make sure I had all the plot points right, but also make sure that I was going to hit all the right themes and the, you know, talk about what some of the challenges are with the prequels, all of those things, to help me sort of you know, buffer up my familiarity with uh, with prequels. Right. And then uh, our librarian, Tom Gross. Hi, Mr. Gross. He wanted me to ask you this one. Did you have any sort of epiphany moments about stars when you were writing these six? Like, oh, I never thought about that for the, for the films. It just kind of changed the way you look at the movies. Uh, definitely with the very first book, the extent to which I realized that Luke Skywalker is the hero of that book. Um, he's, you know, I'm sorry, the movie, of course. It was, sure. You, know, uh, you don't realize until you spend that much time with, with it. And personally, that's because uh, as I've grown older, you know, Luke can somehow, can sometimes come across as a little whiny in that first movie. Uh, but he really is the hero of that, of that first movie. And, 
and really sort of became for me a, a, like almost like a Henry V kind of character, uh, rallying his troops together and, and a young leader. Um, and so, which makes sense in the end of the first book. Teenish. Right, exactly, right. 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 He has a couple of Henry speeches basically uh, adapted for, for Star Wars use. But yeah, so, uh, so I, I would call that an epiphany for sure. Isn't that cool? That's cool. Um, so, you've obviously written a lot of words about Shakespeare and Star Wars together. Do you have any favorite lines Whoa. from the book that were inspired by the movie that kind of resonate with you? Um, do you, in other words, do you quote yourself? Yeah, yeah. Well, what's my favorite of what I've written? Uh, <laughs> uh, that's a great question. And I, I don't know. I don't know that I have favorite lines. I have, I have favorite scenes that I really enjoyed putting together or writing or favorite soliloquies that I enjoy doing. So um, a couple of Emperor Palpatine's uh, speeches I really enjoy. I really like writing for villains for whatever reason. Sure. Um, and uh, some of the scenes between two Imperial Guards or two Jedi uh, where I get to sort of poke fun at the movies, you know, but within within the story itself right. uh, have been fun. So, uh, yeah, so I don't know about particular lines, but I, I definitely have enjoyed this. Enjoyed those other ones. That's cool. And uh, and this one, uh, I already I know that you've seen this. So your books, the books are great to read. Clearly they are. But there's something about when we were in California in April, we I got to see a performance of a combination of the original trilogy basically. And you were on that panel, and you were awesome. Who knew you could do such a good uh, Greedo? And actually, he does a really good Yoda, by the way. Uh, he's done that on our show before. Uh, what is it like for you to see your work performed? Uh, it's just amazing. It's amazing because uh, here are these incredibly talented people, incredibly talented voice actors um, who uh, are bringing their talents to bear and, and really making my words come alive. Uh, just really, it's an honor and it's really humbling, honestly. Right. Is there? I mean, like for me, like I knew your book was funny, but I also knew it had to tackle some serious topics, but to see them performed by like amazing voice actors, it just adds a little bit more to it, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, Like it, Shakespeare it, himself. Right. I mean, it adds in the, the drama, right? I mean, this is why people often will say Shakespeare is meant to be read or performed, out, you know, read out loud or performed, not just not just read on the page. Right. Um, and in his time, it never would have been read on the page. You know, it would have been performed. So, uh, and that's why I think it's, it's uh, yeah, I think it's, that same experience for, for these books uh, adds that same sort of emotional, both for the serious parts and the fun parts, you know, just makes the experience that much richer. Makes sense. So you've got, obviously, and you know, we're talking about literacy here, of course, all day at First Star Wars Reads Day at Washington High School, and the power of literacy is such, uh, to be literate, you have to be a great reader, you have to be a great writer, you know, there's just a nice balance there, of course, you can't have one without the other, so you're taking you're talking about a book like this, what is your writing process like when you're making the William Shakespeare Star Wars series? So I would have the movie, the DVD, in my computer uh, and have the script open online. Um, would sort of watch a few seconds of the movie to sort of catch what the next line is, remind myself of what it is. If there were minor, minor character names I didn't know or there were a handful of lines in the movies that I never quite understood what they were saying, so I could look those up in the script. And then start to think, okay, how does this translate into something that's like Shakespeare, right? Um, how, do you, how does it go when I am a pentameter? Uh, can a character be alone on the stage here to have a soliloquy? Uh, or should they have an aside to the audience? Or is there some sort of fun Shakespearean thing I can throw in here, uh, a reference to one of his plays or something like that? So, uh, and I would give myself the goal each night of getting through about five minutes of the movie. Um, and you do that enough, and eventually you've done the whole thing. Wow. Like, so basically, you're talking about a month to write the book? or Well, and I give myself nights off. So usually, I mean, when it came to the prequel series, uh, usually a couple months to write a book. Yeah. Wow. So obviously this is about Star Wars, but it's also about Shakespeare, an author that is near and dear to my heart and yours as well, clearly. Now, why do you think Shakespeare is still relevant for modern audiences? Well, I think the stories that he tells are stories that we, that all of us connect to. He, he was such a masterful storyteller, and his language is, is so beautiful, um, and, and his characters are so rich also. I mean, if you compare him to 
a lot of the drama of his time, you know, many of them were not not nearly as didn't have sort of the emotional depth that uh, that Shakespeare's characters do, or, or they were flatter characters. Uh, and he just draws these really rich characters and within these stories that we all relate to. And and I so I think that's why he's continued to be popular for hundreds of years. Absolutely. And uh, I'm a pentameter. Explain uh, to our friends here at Washington. What is iambic pentameter? So iambic pentameter is the uh, meter that Shakespeare wrote most of his plays. And, uh, so it's a syllable pattern. And I am is a, uh, an unaccented syllable followed by an accented syllable. So uh, release, right? It's not release, it's release. And so pentameter, penta like pentagon, uh, there are five of them. So an I a line of iambic pentameter is da-dum, 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 da-dum. The example I always give is from the Simon and Garfunkel song, I'd rather be a hammer than a nail. Um, sort of the, you know, or to be or not to be, that is the quest, which is uh, called a, an imperfect uh, ending, weak ending. Right. Interesting. And, and that was something that you can probably, do you already have a good background in that before you tackle these? Or did you, you're probably, not probably, you are an expert in, in verse after writing these, but was that something that... You had a background to kind of learn as you went along? I, I had studied Shakespeare a bit and, and had written in Iambic Pentameter a little bit uh, in years past. You know, I wrote the occasional sonnet because that's the kind of nerd I am. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it really, it, it was, it did take some getting used to uh, when I was writing the first book, especially the first one. Uh, as it, I continued to write the books, it became much easier. So it turns out that, you know, an inhibitor is like using a muscle. The more you exercise it, the stronger it gets. So uh, these days it's it's much easier to write an iambic pentameter and uh, it's, you know, it just, I can I can hear it now when I'm watching a TV show or something and I hear somebody say something and I have a pentameter, I can recognize it. Uh, and, and it really transforms the experience of watching Shakespeare perform. Because uh, you can just hear the rhythm of it so much more. So you're, you're enhancing a lot of worlds here with this and it's, you're emphasizing reading, you're emphasizing writing, you're emphasizing uh, Shakespeare and all the great things because he's influenced so much in culture, obviously. So let's talk, last question for you. What is, why is Star Wars such a useful tool to help promote literacy? Because Star Wars reads, they, at first people might be like, Star Wars and reading, what? But there's more to it, isn't there? Well, and I think it's because Star Wars is a, a group of movies and then beyond that, uh, books and all kinds of other things, toys, you know, that have connected to... Uh, people our age and people our kids' ages and everybody in between and older than us and you know uh, so they are stories that have captured the imagination of millions and millions of people um, and and so I think it can help with reading because when I mean any time you're reading about something that you are already engaged in or you already like uh, you're going to be more interested in it so you know, Star Wars sort of becomes the vehicle to help help you know get kids interested in reading, right? I mean, that's certainly true for my own kids, right, who may not want to read a book that's a story that they're unfamiliar with, but if it's a Star Wars story, they're going to be more interested in, in it because they know the Star Wars galaxy already uh, and, and want to hear more about it. Absolutely. And so together you're talking about encouraging students to read, meeting them where they're at, and it's all about literacy and making that brain of yours even more smart and savvy. So, Ian Desher, thank you so much for being here with us at Washington High School. Where can people buy your books or reach out if they want to ask you a question? Uh, I have a website, iandesher.com, and there's a little form there that you can fill out. It comes right to me, and I'm happy to hear your questions. Yeah, Very good. Well, Ian Desher, thanks so much for being here. Right, thank you. I like the sound of that. Echo 3 to Echo 7. Ah, nobody. You read me? I saw part of the message. You... I seem to have found it. Tom here again, uh, introducing, uh, letting us know about some of the prizes. We, talk, we just talked with Ian Desher, so here's Tom explaining that. Yeah, thanks a lot for that interview with Ian Desher. That was fantastic. I want to remind everybody who's here that those Ian Desher books 
all autographed by Ian Desher are on a raffle over at the book fair. Um, just make a small donation over at the book fair. Mrs. Eisenberg is holding up her, oh, holding up the prize over there. That collection of books, each book individually signed with a special message in each book to the owner of those. Um, that donate, just make a small donation over there. Put your uh, entry ticket into the bucket over there, and we will draw that prize at the end of the day. However, you do not have to be present to win that prize so but we will be giving that away at the end of uh of the um the event at noon i do have if i can take some time on your show please do i have some more door prizes to get away so to give away so get your orange tickets out i've got lots of numbers to read because i had a few unclaimed over there so i've got a few extras here to read uh but Here we go. While you're getting your tickets out, I want to remind you, uh, don't forget to get your picture taken with the 501st Midwest Garrison and the Jedis and uh, and those guys over in that area have got the, as the Stormtrooper target range. Uh, looks like it's available for some shooting over there. We've got the Sarlacc pit around the corner. We have all sorts of great fun and games, uh, so check those things out. So here are the numbers. Now check, out, check your orange tickets. Here are the numbers. We've I do want to point out if I win, these are for my son. They're not for me. Ha ha. Okay. okay. We have the first number is uh, 830 Eight zero five five, eight zero five five. Next we have eight three zero, eight zero eight eight. That's eight zero eight eight. Next is eight three zero, eight zero five zero, eight zero five zero. Then eight three zero, eight zero nine one, eight zero nine one. 830. Next, 830-8034. This is great podcasting right here. I mean, it is. Your it listeners is. are just People listening to this in eight months are going to be riveted. That's right. <laughs> 830-8062 is our next number. 8062. Next, you just bring your ticket over to the uh, prize table here. Then 830-8017. 8017. Next is 830-8106. I'm waiting for some woohoos. I haven't heard many of those yet. 830-8081. And then 830-8047. So there are the ones that we've got. Don't throw those tickets away yet, though, because there are still more prizes over there. Um, the last two books for the game, for the tickets that the kids are winning in their games, we'll draw those soon after Coffee with Kenobi is over. So there you go, guys. Thanks. Thanks. All right. So thank you very much again, Tom. Uh, one of the very best parts about Coffee with Kenobi for us is we get to talk with fans all over the world. Now here is your chance live to come up to the microphone and ask a question, offer your insights, or just say hello. Please line up over here by Mr. Gross, and we'll be happy to answer or comment on any Star Wars-related questions you have. This is your chance to be on a podcast. Come on down. For those of you listening at home, the line is overwhelming, and we, we may need security yeah, to uh, hold make back. sure this works out. Yes. Come on down if you have a question or just want to say hello. Uh, Princess Leia is considering it. Hello there. Who, who are you dressed as? Let's talk, start with that. Who are you dressed as? Princess Leia. Princess Leia. She, is she your favorite character? Why do you like Princess Leia so much? It's a really awesome costume. Isn't great. it a great costume she's wearing? Yeah. Why do you like Star Wars so much? How about that? My dad, he loves it when he was little. So the first time he showed it to me, I loved it. Ah, that is good That's parenting. That's story. parenting done right. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Anybody else? You want to talk some? What do you think about Star Wars? Um, I liked it also because of my dad. He showed it to us, and I liked it. And then I forgot about it. Then we watched it again, and we're all really excited for the new movie. Awesome. So Absolutely. Cool. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes, young man. Do you have a question? This guy looks rowdy. <laughs> um, I'm actually the son of Corey Club. It's like sounds like Anakin and Luke a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, it's same, similar parentage. Um, hmm. Do you have a question or a comment? Why do you like Star Wars? Um, probably because it's in space and stuff. I like That's as good a reason as any. <laughs> 
Anything else? Nah, I'm good. You're good? You yeah. having fun today? Yeah. Good. Hello there. I'm the daughter of the librarian. <laughs> that sounds official. Yes, it is. Your costume is awesome. Who are you dressed as? Um, Ray from the new movie. It's very, very cool. Looks great, yeah. Is your, does your, is your dad the person who introduced you to Star Wars? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty great. Well, you got a pretty cool dad. And a pretty cool mom for putting up with Mr. Gross. Uh, I think uh, Corey and I are pretty cool wives for putting up with our Star Wars nerds right. too. Thank you. Um, Do you have any questions or comments? Um, I like, I like um, the... Um, my favorite movie is when um, the New Hope, A New Hope. New Hope, good choice. Awesome. Well, what I like about um, Star Wars is like it's very adventurous, and it's like it's like it's want, it's wanting your kids to get out there and like explore the world. That's right. That's right, and we ha we have one more special uh, person uh, who looks he looks got a pretty cool costume too. Help him out. Yeah, we'll help him out. This might be our youngest guest ever on Coffee with Kenobi. What's your name? Mason. Mason, Mason, who's your favorite character? Daddy. Daddy? <laughs> that is a great name. I didn't actually plan it. What costume are you wearing? Darth Vader. Darth Vader, very good. Can you say everybody hi? Can you say Star Wars? Star Wars. Well, thank you very much, Sarah, for Mason. Yeah, we're biased. We had our, we had our kids on here. We were biased. Thank you, buddy. So that was some quite uh, some fan moments there. That's true. We're we're, it's get, we're getting ready to get out of here. So Chewy, uh, Han, and Chewie are going to give us a special little note here. Chewie, get us out of here! Give the evacuation code signal. Okay, thank you again so much, everybody, for being here. Let's thank uh, Maureen Eisenberg and and Kevin Bob Garden and Tom Gross for doing such an amazing job making Star Wars. Reads the reality here in Washington. We'll hope to do it again next year. Thank you so much, everybody. You're welcome. Hey, let's give a hand to Coffee with Kenobi. What a great show, you guys. Thanks a lot. You. Thank you. This is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi, unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for. There's no one here. Hold on. Hold on. From Tops comes the all new digital card collecting app, free to download from iTunes or Google Play. Star Wars Card Trader. For the first time ever, collect and trade everything from legendary 1977 Star Wars cards to new cards featuring exclusive content from Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens. All from the comfort of your mobile devices, Star Wars Card Trader. These are the cards you're looking for.